Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing great. This section of my channel will basically deal with the basics of practicals that we do in laboratories. With these simple practicals, I want to give a clear idea on the basic principles involved in fermentation techniques. So to begin with, let's discuss the logic involved behind the maintenance and preservation of pure culture. First of all, let's discuss the different types of cultures. A microbiological culture or microbial culture is a method of multiplying microbial organisms by letting them reproduce in predetermined culture medium under controlled laboratory conditions. Whereas a pure culture is basically a culture in which only one strain is present. In microbiological cultures, we can have more than one strains, but now here we are talking about pure culture where only one type of strain should be present in the culture medium. Here we allow the pure culture to multiply and form a discrete colony on the plate which may then be used to inoculate more medium with the assurance that only one type of organism will be present. Now when we are working in laboratory with a culture strain, it is important to maintain stock cultures. A stock culture is mainly a culture of a pure microorganism which is maintained solely for the purpose of keeping the microorganism in a viable condition by subculturing into a fresh medium. Whereas a slum culture is basically a culture which is made on the surface of solidified medium in a tube which has been tilted to provide a greater surface area for growth. Now what is the need for preservation of cultures? It's done basically to keep them alive, contamination free, as healthy as possible and to maintain viability and biochemical or virulence characteristics. That is the characteristics which are specific for particular microorganisms, they need to be maintained throughout the time. Also, we need authentic reference strains that are required for comparison with laboratory isolates that is the new isolates that we have isolated in the laboratory or they can be used as control cultures in standard methods of analysis and for use in research and teaching. By maintaining and preserving such cultures, it is easy to have an access to actively growing cultures which is a requirement of most microbiological laboratories. Cultures are routinely required generally on a day-to-day -day basis for quality control, comparative testing, inoculum for biases and for various other reasons. Therefore, it is important to keep these cultures with their original features and characteristics so that they can be used as a reference and standard stains anytime. The choice of preservation method depends on many factors that includes the nature of the organism, means what kind of microorganism we want to preserve, is it bacteria, fungi, yeast or any other. Then availability of equipment and skilled personnel, preservation objective, like what is the purpose of preserving the cultures, then ease of transportation so that these cultures, these standard strains can be provided without getting contaminated. Frequency of use of cultures like if you want to use the culture within weeks or months or even years. And finally the maintenance costs depending upon the type of equipment that we are using. Now two main methods that can be used to preserve the culture that is in regular use in the laboratories are the agar slums and the glycerol stocks. Now let us first see what are agar slums. The agar slant is simply a test tube in which the warm liquefied agar is poured in the test tube, sterilized by autoclaving and then the test tube is oriented in a slanted position approximately 45 degree angle and the agar is allowed to cool and solidify. We can either use test tubes covered with cotton plugs or tubes which are covered with screw caps. The purpose of both the tubes is to keep them contamination free. Now once the agar has been solidified, the test tube can be stored upright and the agar inside has a slanted appearance as you can see in the first image. Now when we have sterilized agar slant ready, it is ready to be inoculated by the pure culture that we want to preserve. Now when inoculating an agar slant, we take a sterilized inoculating loop dipped into the inoculum containing the cells that we want to preserve 
and move it very lightly over the surface of the agar slant in a zigzag formation and we have to be careful that the surface is not broken. Sometimes a needle can be used instead of an inoculating loop to inoculate an agar slant by stabbing the needle containing the inoculum into the agar. After inoculation, we incubate the agar slant at the appropriate temperature of the microbial cells that we are preserving and after a specific time, we see the growth on the agar slants as you can see in the second image. Now many of you want to know what is the advantage of using these agar slant as a preservative method. Slanting the surface of the agar gives the bacteria a greater surface area to grow in a test tube. So if we don't tilt the test tubes, the surface area that will be provided by a test tube will be very less flat surface. Furthermore, slants are created in test tubes that can be capped which minimizes water loss. This is very important because of high moisture content of agar media. Therefore, we have to make sure that whatever kind of tubes we are using, they are supposed to be capped very tightly. Also, agar slants consume less storage space than the stacks of petri dishes for maintaining the cultures. Multiple cultures are easily placed into the test tube racks and stored under refrigeration. Now let us come to the second method of preservation that are glycerol stocks. Glycerol stocks are mainly a mixture of liquid medium with overnight grown microbial culture that we want to preserve and glycerol in a ratio of 1 is to 1. The optimal concentration of long term glycerol storage is unknown. Most labs store bacteria in 15 to 50 percent glycerol. Usually a 2 ml screw cap tube or cryo vial is used. Freezing is an efficient way of storing bacteria. A glycerol stock is therefore stored stably at minus 80 degrees Celsius for many years. It is very important that you shake the glycerol before freezing 5 to 6 times and make sure that you see one uniform solution and there are no layers present. So this method is preferred when we want to store our cultures for many years. Now what is the purpose of mixing glycerol in the liquid media containing the viable cells? So glycerol basically acts as a cryoprotectant that is a substance that is used to protect biological cells from freezing damage. The presence of glycerol depresses the freezing point of bacterial cells that enhances supercooling. It does so by forming strong hydrogen bonds with water molecules competing with water-water hydrogen bonding. This means that glycerol is competing with the strong water-water hydrogen bonding and tries to establish its stronger bond via hydrogen bonding with water molecules. This in turn disrupts the crystal lattice formation of ice. Therefore, the ice crystals formed are not that much strong and hard to affect the cells. So basically, glycerol allows to reduce the harmful effect of ice crystals which can damage cells by dehydration caused by a localized increase in salt concentration leading to denaturation of proteins. In this way, the water is still available to the cells so that they can survive in such conditions of low temperature. Additionally, ice crystals can also puncture cellular membranes. Therefore, the addition of glycerol stabilizes the frozen cells, preventing damage to the cell membranes and keeping the cells alive. So by far we have learned two different methods that can be used in laboratories for preservation and maintenance of pure cultures. Also, these two methods are very simple to perform and are very cost effective. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions regarding this topic, you can write down in the comment section below or you can mail me on the given ID. Thank you.